Over the past 40,000 years, man has practically not changed in his structure. Despite the huge difference in technological, scientific, and cultural development, it can be said already at that time our species was formed in its present state. True, some scientists believe that certain differences between us and our ancestors still exist. Also, the more distant these people are from us in time, the more features inherent in Neanderthals are present in their genotype. Today, we will try to figure out where a modern type of person came from and can we be considered Cro-Magnons? If you are interested in questions of the origin of species and the history of the development of our planet, then we recommend subscribing to our channel. Also, our viewers can help in its promotion by leaving comments under the videos and liking the videos. The word Cro-Magnon comes from the name of the French cave Cro-Magnon, in which the first remains of this type of people were discovered in 1868. The researchers found several male and female skeletons of varying degrees of preservation with tools and other items. Now, in the scientific community, the term Cro-Magnon in the narrow sense can refer both to people found in this cave or living on the territory of the European continent in the period from 40,000 to 10,000 years ago and to the entire population of the Earth during the Upper Paleolithic. But saying that Cro-Magnons were similar to modern people, it is worth noting that the inhabitants of different parts of our planet have a huge number of differences. So what did the Cro-Magnons look like and what race or nationality people are more similar to our common ancestors? In some early reconstructions, the Cro-Magnon is depicted as an exact copy of a modern European with blonde hair, a narrow straight nose, and a rather slender figure. But modern methods of analysis give an accurate idea that these ancient people were overwhelmingly swarthy or even black-skinned, had dark hair and eyes. The presence of light eyes among the Cro-Magnons was a big exception. It is believed that the indigenous inhabitants of Australia and the Pacific Islands have almost completely preserved the appearance that they inherited from their ancestors from the distant Paleolithic. And to a large extent, this is true. Several tens of thousands of years ago, the population of Europe was a people with a more massive figure than ours, with a flattened face and a more advanced chin. But the Cro-Magnon nose was not as flat and wide as that of the Australian Aborigines or the inhabitants of Africa, and the jaws protruded much less. They received these signs much later in the process of settling around the world. But the most interesting thing is that there are external differences between people from the Upper Paleolithic, whose remains were found in different places, were more diverse than the differences between all the people that inhabit the Earth now. Scientists explain this fact by the fact that then people lived in small groups of several dozen people. Most of them were relatives, and therefore each such small group had its own distinctive external features. Thus, we can conclude that people who lived in Europe about 20 to 30,000 years ago outwardly differed slightly from modern Europeans and, at the same time, were very different from each other. Common features of all Cro-Magnons, in which they did not look like modern people, can be called a larger and more massive skull with protruding superciliary arches and protruding face with a large palate and wide cheekbones. Their height could reach 180 to 190 centimeters, their limbs were elongated, this type of physique is now inherent in the inhabitants of the tropical regions of the Earth. It is believed that such a body structure contributed to faster movement and helped well in hunting. Also, people of the Cro-Magnon type are characterized by angular eye sockets and a narrow, protruding nose. But one of the most important features of this type of people was the brain of a large size. According to some reports, its volume could reach 1,800 cubic centimeters. On average, it was 1,500 cubic centimeters. This is even somewhat more than that of modern inhabitants of our planet. The average brain volume of a modern person is about 1,300 cubic centimeters. 
The Cro-Magnon skull was distinguished by thick walls and a strongly protruding nape. With a high probability, these signs came to them from the Neanderthals, who were undoubtedly their ancestors. Various components of Neanderthal DNA are present in many fossils around the world. For example, in the Sungarevsky burial ground near the city of Vladimir, a skeleton of a man about 180 centimeters tall with broader shoulders than the rest was found. It is believed that this giant had a large admixture of Neanderthal DNA, but for the most part, Cro-Magnons were dry and hot. At the same time, they were quite muscular with long legs and a short torso. The earliest finds of the remains of people with signs of this type date back to the period from 100 to 200,000 years ago. They are found in Africa and a little later in the Middle East. And in the period from 40,000 to 50,000 years ago, these people already lived throughout Europe, actively pushing the Neanderthals to less habitable territories. A little more than 10,000 years ago, the Cro-Magnons had already begun to populate the American continent, crossing the Bering Strait along the resulting land bridge. From all of the above, we can conclude that the Cro-Magnons who lived from about 10 to 40,000 years ago were very similar to us. But at the same time, among the ancient people themselves, there was a huge number of external differences. Despite the fact that our origin from the Cro-Magnons is currently indisputable, scientists are inclined to believe that representatives of different races and peoples descended from different groups of these same Cro-Magnons. The latest finds of the remains of people of a purely Cro-Magnon type date back to a period of six to 9,000 years ago. After that, with the transition to a settled way of life and the advent of the Neolithic economy, various populations began to acquire their own different external features. Such variability, although in a lesser form, is also observed among those people who, for a long time, remained exclusively hunters and gatherers. Although the common features that distinguish Cro-Magnon type people from our other ancestors have more or less been preserved in all modern people. Although, in the cultural and technical sense, the Cro-Magnons were much inferior to modern people, but in terms of ingenuity and ability to be creative, they could perhaps give us a serious head start. Having started their life journey with the simplest spears and clubs, they were able to invent and master not only the spear thrower, but also the bow. They also created unique drawings on the walls of the caves, developed funeral and magical rites, and had their own idea of medicine and possibly religion. It is believed that rock art in the caves of the European Alps, the Ural Mountains, and other habitats of the people of the Upper Neolithic Era had more of a religious and magical meaning. These drawings depicted various animals accompanied by the designation of arrows or spears. Scientists suggest that these pictures were associated with hunting rituals or initiation rites for hunters. But the intricate carvings on the handles of knives and other tools, as well as the decorations on garments, could well have been an aesthetic thing. During the excavations of a huge number of sites of ancient people, a large number of figurines made of stone and bone were found. Among the funeral inventory, there were also household items and weapons. Also, the Cro-Magnons were the first to tame wild animals. The first assistant of ancient people was the domesticated wolf, from which all breeds of domestic dogs subsequently descended. Some scientists believe that this symbiosis greatly increased the efficiency of hunting and became the main reason for the successful development of this type of people. It was these qualities and achievements that made our ancestors the dominant species and allowed them to spread throughout the planet destroying or assimilating their natural competitors. Being the direct descendants of these ancient hunters and gatherers, the modern inhabitants of the Earth can overcome all the natural disasters that are coming in the future and remain the masters of this planet for many more thousands of years. But for this, it is necessary to draw the right lessons from the history of their development and direct the inherited ingenuity and ability to adapt to changes in the right direction. We are grateful to the viewers of the channel who watched this video to the end. 
If you are interested in the topic of the emergence of modern man, then you can get acquainted with the earlier ancestors of people and versions of their origin from our earlier materials. Thanks.